Today we'll be learning about Samotha exigua, or the tongue-eating louse. Animal Kingdom Phylum Arthropoda Subphylum Crustacea, scientific name Samotha exigua. He lives off the coast of California down to Ecuador in the Pacific Ocean. He's about the, roughly the size of your thumb, maybe a little bit smaller. Now, the genus that this little guy comes from, Samotha, is actually a genus of parasitic isopod crustaceans. And so, all of these little guys are parasitic, but of all the parasites in the world, not just this specific genus, this is the only parasite that becomes a functional organ of its host. And given by its name, you can obviously figure out which one that is, but we'll get to that. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Now, there's not a whole lot of scientific study going on about these guys. Um... They're fairly rare. They usually tend to have about six pairs of legs, anywhere from seven to eight segments, and a, and a tail end. And on the front, they have two pinchers or claws that actually are used to extract blood from the tongue of the host. And as you can see, they do have the two eyes on the front of the head, no really extra large sensory organs like antennas or whatnot. And the six legs are all very strong and sharp as they are used to hook into the host. Tugging louses have been found in parasitic relationships with about 12 dozen different species of fish, mostly turning up in rose-potted snappers, you know, coming out of the fishing industry, and also some people have gone to dinner and happened to find them in their meal, filed lawsuits and whatnot, but in this relationship, it is beneficial to them because, as other free-swimming isopods might find, they are susceptible to being prey very easily, but these guys have a nice little home inside their fish, so unless that fish, you know, is eaten by a shark or something, they're pretty much okay. No one's really going to go in there, you know, get in the other fish's mouth and eat them out of there. They're, they're pretty safe as far as that part goes. Now, these guys are most likely to start out their lives as nopolises, just like most other crustaceans, which is basically their, um, their larval form. Um, they're free swimming, they go throughout the ocean until they develop into their post larva stage, and then that's when they'll find their way into the gills of a lucky fish. And at the beginning of their lives, they are males because they are hermaphroditic, and until they're about 10 millimeters long, they will be males, and then once they become females, that's when they'll make their move from the gills to the tongue, and they attach to the tongue with those front claws. Suck all the blood out of the tongue, and the tongue becomes asphyxiated, shrivels up into just pretty much a little nub. And then, our little friend here, he will attach himself to the muscles of that tongue nub, and actually become a functional tongue for that fish. Where then, he'll then feed off fish mucus and blood, and also possibly anything passing through that fish's mouth. As our isopods are sucking the blood of the fish, they are successfully gaining nutrients and oxygen from that fish. Now, touching back on reproduction, um, these creatures do exhibit sexual reproduction. It occurs on the gills of the fish, actually, and they're, and by these creatures being hermaphroditic, basically, they'll start off, they're born male. They have male parts, exhibit male reproduction features, and then once they grow to a certain stage, those the, the male features, basically, they just kind of fade away, and then they gain you know, ovules, and then the, the female reproduction parts. And so when we have a case with a male and a female, both on the gills of a fish, usually it turns out being two males and one of them develops, then they'll, you know, they'll mate in sexual reproduction, then they'll lay the eggs in the gills of the fish, and then the female moves on to the tongue. In a brief overview here, our tongue-eating louse, Samotha Exigua. He lives in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of North and South America. He's hermaphroditic, and the main thing that you want to take away here is that he is the only parasite that serves as an organ for his host. The only one. I mean, that's kind of like you having worms for toes. It's kind of strange, but hey, it's kind of cool. So, anyway, we're going to wrap it up here with a poem. Tongue-eating louse, tongue-eating louse. Why did you choose a fish for your house? You sucked all its blood from out of its tongue, and now look what you have become. Small, white, and parasitic, and also hermaphroditic. They should call you scumbag louse for making that fish be your house.